Summertime means summer pests for both people, as we've talked about in recent weeks, and your cattle. Today, Dr. Justin Talley, our OSU Extension Livestock Entomologist, gets us up to speed on some prevention and treatment options for your herd. Yeah, as we come into late spring and into early summer, we're going to start experiencing increased uh, populations of ticks and flies on cattle. Our, our main concern is that the, the ticks that are on cattle uh, can cause some production losses, uh, whether it's due to increased irritation or just decreased production because of the number of ticks on them. The main things you need to consider is that you'll, you'll feel a tick before you see a tick, so you're actually going to have to check those animals in a chute and conduct a tick scratch. Uh, and that's just simply putting an animal in a chute where you can feel around that animal between the legs, the brisket area, down the jawline, and kind of along the sides of that animal to determine if they have significant tick populations. And of course, we are coming at the, the tail end of what we call a Gulf Coast tick season that can get both into calves as well as cow cows. And they're always feeding on the ears of cattle and you'll easily see those. But we're kind of coming into the end of that season, but it, you'll start seeing this overlap with Lone Star ticks American dog ticks and Gulf Coast ticks all feeding on cattle at this time. And the main thing is just to get some preventative measures in there, whether it's uh, insecticides, whether it's uh, treated ear tags, pour-ons or sprays, but just think about where the ticks are located and how each of those work differently uh, to control the tick. So as we're coming into uh, the summer periods and we have increased temperatures, some available moisture, in including humidity, we're going to start seeing increased fly populations on cattle. Our most significant fly populations that impact cattle across the state are horn flies. In fact, we know that annually it, horn flies cost about $1.36 billion just to the U.S. cattle industry. That's a pretty significant impact anywhere from the cost of controlling that fly to Ha the, the impact that fly has. Our main issue is that uh, you have many flies on, on, on the cow that can take anywhere from 1.5 milligrams to 2.0 milligrams of blood, but multiply that by 300 to 1,000 flies, and that becomes a severe irritation, and plus it impacts production and efficiency of those animals. But yeah, we have two other flies that can impact cattle, uh, the stable fly and the horse fly. These are both blood feeding flies. Stable flies are coming from areas you're not traditionally thinking of, which includes your winter hay feeding sites. If you don't clean up those winter hay feeding sites, then it's going to contribute to significant populations of stable flies. They will tend to decrease as it gets warm, so you'll see them decrease in July and August, but then they'll come back in September and October sometimes. And then our other fly that is a common issue across Oklahoma are horse flies. And of course, horse flies and deer flies are large flies that can irritate cattle significantly. Our challenge with this fly is that it's only the female flies that are feeding on the animals, and they're only on the animal for a short period of time. So our traditional control techniques, such as insecticides, may have a limited impact. So it's more or less trying to prevent animals being exposed from those flies in problematic areas.